You know, you're in the Midwest. You're kind of a fish out of water, you know, here in the Great Lakes. Come on, ladies. Some of these people don't even know you can surf out here. You know, they have no clue, and they've been born and raised here. Most of the time, people kind of surprised, like, oh, the waves get big enough on the lakes? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's actually, you know, it gets pretty good. There is a secret. There is that secret about the lakes. It's not Southern California. It's not Florida. You know, it may not be perfect, but it's a good feeling, man. Knowing that you got somewhere to surf in the Midwest. The surfers that I've met out here are really like the nicest people. Get that thing up there. I think part of it is being a surfer. They see you are willing to put yourself through all this stuff to go surfing, and they're like, yeah, you're one of us. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Lake surfers have a bond and camaraderie because we're doing something unique. And all of us are kind of unique too. We're not all the same. We're not cookie cutters. Everyone's a little bit different. When I think of Wisconsin, cows come to mind. You know, I just didn't tie in the lake. You know, I was guilty as anyone. Oh, you can't surf on a lake. I didn't think it would get that good. I felt there was always something missing by not surfing. But I, I guess I fulfilled that with my family life. What's your name? My name's Rudolph. I like you. No, you're the fastest reindeer Santa has, aren't you? You gotta come in my sled. Can I, can I... When I came out here, just never picked it up and didn't surf um, for a long time. You know, <laughs> 14 years is a long time. There's not many guys here who are like super stoked on living here. Which kind of makes it cool because everyone's just kind of getting by, like with the with the ways that we have, and makes it a weird subculture. Come in here. This is our like non-surfboard surfing stuff. We got a fan running because it's all pretty wet right now from surfing. It smells like urine. Urine and neoprene. When she met me, she knew I surfed, but um, she didn't know the extent of my passion. She really didn't know. <laughs> she didn't. I think the worst was when you left on Christmas Day. Yeah. He opened all his gifts and then he's out the door to go surfing. Yeah. It was out. It was after four o'clock, so I, <laughs> I tried to stay. You know, I tried to stay after for a little while, but you know, when the waves call, you know, you go. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey, across the street from the Atlantic Ocean. We used to surf eight hours a day, you know, just go. But I, I was a kid, I was younger. You know, come in, grab some lunch, and go back out and surf for another four hours. And it was a great feeling. When you look down and you see the bottom of the wave pulling out from underneath you, you, you just get that rush feeling, you know, it starts cruising along the face of the wave. Just in my head, I always thought of myself as a surfer. Didn't see family in my future, didn't see um, bills and responsibilities coming down the line. All I said, I just want to make enough money so I can eat and surf. Call me when you are um, leaving, so I know what okay. kind of time frame. Yeah, it's gonna be about dark. Probably stay till dark. Be At careful least, driving. Yeah. Have fun. I rediscovered surfing here in Wisconsin, um, it was about 2000. I'm watching the TV and I saw this thing said, oh, another year of the Dairyland Surf Classic in Sheboygan, Wisconsin has come to an end. I'm like, Surf Classic? Sheboygan, what's this? And I started researching it a little bit more and, and found out that, okay, they have this gathering, the Surf Classic thing in Sheboygan every Labor Day weekend. And so I talked to Amanda and said, let's go in and check it out. So I ended up seeing all these guys that were, were surfing. I'm like, wow, look at all these guys. They're actually surfing the lake. Look, hey, we get good waves. You can surf the lake. So my eyes were getting bigger and bigger the whole ride home. I'm buying a board. I'm getting a wetsuit. I can remember the first day that I, I caught a wave right at one of our local breaks. It just took off and I was screaming across it. 
I kicked out. I was just like screaming, "Wow! This is just, man, this was just like the ocean." I was just so excited that I, I got that rush, that feeling. And I was like, "These waves really do have power." And it did open up something inside of me because I couldn't get enough of it then. When I first surfed, uh, it was in Kennebunk, Maine. I was just super into it. I didn't really catch on right away, but like after we came back to the lake, I mean, got boards, and every time there were waves, it was like after school, like surf hour past dark. There he goes. Oh yeah, that's just how that's gonna take him home. You first turn around for a wave, and you see it like behind you, paddling for it. Right when you kind of pop up and drop it, that's the best feeling. Once you're on the wave, you just kind of slowly learn what feels right. As soon as Blake sort of picked it up as his big hobby, um, we sort of learned it together and kind of went through a lot of the early stages at the same time, even though I'm, you know, 20 some years older than he is. I hope that actually came through, but that was sweet. A lot of times we could surf locally, but we decide maybe to do a trip somewhere because it's, it's just fun to drive and hang out. Where, where are we at? <laughs> Donuts. Will you please take my order? In about 25 minutes and 30 seconds. Me and my dad are always surfing together and like driving together. Not that we get, don't get sick of each other, but it's still like, really not though. I mean, we're just, it's pretty easy to just surf together and hang out. It's fun to be out there with them and watch them. And it's really enjoyable to see somebody doing something that they enjoy so much and just are passionate about. And when it's your kid, it's like that makes it even more special. When you first jump into the water, with it being 38 or 32, it just takes your breath away. Your wetsuit seals you up, but it does let water in. You're getting a little seepage coming in, and you feel that water, it's cold. You can't think of how cold you are. You gotta think of how warm you are, and what areas in your body are, are warm. You know, my crotch is warm, and my toes feel okay. You know, my fingers haven't cramped up. Like with bad wetsuits, you get like flushed sometimes, like in bad wipeouts. But like the only thing that really gets cold is like your face, like a brain freeze, and like you get super like numb, and you kind of like have to like work around your face to get it to warm up again. One time when I was out, I paddled through a wave, came up and opened my mouth too soon, and it froze my lungs. It, I mean, I could not breathe. People think you're crazy for going out there when there, you know there's like ice in the water and like it's snowing and everything. But I don't know. I think it's crazier just to sit inside all day. You gotta work for it today. Yeah. It's you know, you really have to have a deep, deep passion for surfing to do what we do. You know, it's for the love. How would a like, young burden describe himself? Ah, uh, outgoing, let's surf, let's, you know, party a little and, uh, you know, and everything in between. You know, I was on the high school surf team. I just knew I wanted to surf. Come on, Jasper. Jasper, we'll go outside. Come on, honey. Come on, we're gonna go potty. Come on, Jasper. Come on, Jasper. Come. Oh. Oh. All right, you can bring your bone too. I've been surfing for over 24 years, and I've surfed all over Mexico, Costa Rica. I lived in Hawaii, Maui, Lahaina. I've surfed over the east and west coast. Come on, Jasper. Come on. Come on. Come on. I just surfed and worked and did did my thing, you know. Come on. Well, it wasn't an easy decision. It really wasn't. I knew it'd be permanent out here in Wisconsin. Well, it looks like Thursday, there's going to be a good uh, wind and swell out of the south southeast. So, so my, what does that mean? <laughs> might be, might be taking off in early afternoon and maybe head up to Sheboygan. We'll see how work goes though. First, a little bit different, I think, marrying a California surfer as opposed to a Great Lakes surfer. <laughs> When Burton and I were dating, we met in California. I was actually in the process of purchasing a house in Wisconsin. Just kind of thought it would be time to move home and everything just kind of happened really fast. Burton decided to come with me. It's not snowing yet, huh, Jasper? Yeah, she's my little angel. I love Jody. You come to a point in your life where you gotta kind of switch stuff up. You know, I miss California. I miss the good waves, I miss my family and my good friends back there, but you know, this is what we got.
Moved to Wisconsin in 1986 because of a job. Thought I was gonna be here for about a year or two and then move out to California. I don't think I could have done that where there wasn't the body of water. Even though I wasn't surfing, we had the lake there, so it felt like you were on the ocean. So subconsciously, I knew I was in the right spot. He said at that time that he was only planning on staying here two years, but I guess he ended up liking it. <laughs> the night was over and the place was clearing out. I looked across the room and saw her standing by the doorway. She smiled at me and I was like, oh, she got a nice smile. After the fact, he always says, I walked over to that cute girl and she, she talked to me, so I just kept talking to her. And I guess I'm gonna say mutually, I thought he was a cute guy, so I was like, okay. I started building a relationship with Amanda and she had two children, young children at the time when I met her. Just remember they were neat little kids. I got along with them well right away. Just like, this is right, this is where I'm meant to be. Some days we know matter of fact it's gonna score. Today's one of those iffy days. It's not you know, epic conditions, but there is a good chance that there'll be waves to ride. You know, being a lake, you gotta got take what we can get. Yeah, this is usually the point where I say, why are we doing this? It's a little better once we get in the water, get moving. I'm working during the weekend and I only have this one day to go surfing and there's ways, whether they're mushy or good, I'm gonna go try to ride them. It's a lake, you know, and, and we take what the lake can give us as far as surfing. Even on those sloppy days, I just need one wave just to get a feeling that glide. And I was like, okay, I'm good for a little while, you know, until the next ones come along. I don't see the Great Lakes being a surf destination because of the cold and because of inconsistency. The windows here, they're not that long. You may get a good day, you know, good surf, and the next day it's gone. You know, I guess the people that are on it the most and that surf the most are pretty much always looking ahead to see when it's going to be good. So Lake Michigan, wave height. I don't know. I mean, it's actually really interesting, like how the wind like makes waves and how the wind is created and what direction and all that. Well, winter's the best time because there's more storms, there's more wind generated. And surfing on a lake, it's all wind generated waves or swells, we'll call them. There's always some kind of different swell. There's always some kind of different break that's going off. So it's just knowing your right winds and your right surf spots. We'll be watching TV and, you know, he keeps taking the remote and turning on the weather channel. I wake up with the weather channel. I go to bed with the weather, you know. Sometimes I'll be watching a TV show and then two minutes before the show's gonna end, he's trying to turn on the local on the eights and I'm like, but I need to see the end of my show, you know. <laughs> and he doesn't care. <laughs> you may not get to surf as much as you want to. And you may have to drive farther to get your surf, but you're getting your waves, you know, and that's really all that matters. It's weird, it like, like looks smaller than eight feet. It does, I don't know that it really is eight feet. I think his approach to surfing is basically that if he can surf on any given day, he will. It's just something that he naturally loves to do. I mean, it's fun to be out there with him and watch him. You almost get as much fun watching and taking some photos or videos of Blake as, as actually being out there yourself surfing. When you put it down, you make it more upright. He's not you know, competitive or boastful or anything like that, but he does really like to see photos of himself surfing and see like how, how did I look on that wave. And he tends to remember every wave from every photo. You know what, Blake is one of the up and coming rippers out here on the lakes. And it's because of his upbringing with his dad and his passion with surfing. He's basically about as dedicated to getting out there as, as you can possibly be. When I go out there, he's like just always on it, you know? You can be like at the top of Atwater looking down and uh, you see like this kid ripping and you're like, oh, that's Blake. Every time I see him, he's doing different things and you can see that he really gets it. He has style, he's making the right turns. His cutbacks, his floaters, how hard he paddles. 
It's neat to see homegrown talent growing and, and keeping the tradition going. Yeah, I don't know what his goals are in serving. I think, you know, he's just, you know, focused on having fun right now, and that's, that's totally awesome. So it's cool to see him following the waves just like we are, chasing that dream. Blake's doing his thing, and that's what I'm really stoked on. You're on the floor. I see you. I want to do that. You want to do this? You want to look through it? You want to see Papa? Here, look at Papa. Can you see Papa? Yeah. What is Papa? Are you shooting pictures of Papa? Hi, Isaiah. Can you see me? I became a grandfather when I was 44. What am I doing? Am I smiling? Oh, what? We were there right after he was born, and he looked right down at him, and he tells Isaiah, this, I'll be here for you forever. I'll be right here for you. And it's like he has. You gonna go night night? Uh -huh. Okay. You go night too. Papa go night night too? Uh -huh. oh, okay. He started calling me Papa, you know, and I, and I loved it. Isaiah and I will go down and play on the beach while he's surfing, so he watches him. And he would love to watch it. He just, I want to watch Papa surf, Papa surf. So we thought it was cool. In other words, it was kind of exciting for me, you know, to see that he liked it. I got him a wetsuit when he was three. He was a little baggy on him. And, you know, we roared in the swimming pool. That was part of me, you know, trying to nudge him towards the surfing. And I just wanted him to have as much fun as I had as a kid. And I think Tom is um, the best papa ever. And I think they have a very special closeness. Hopefully, I can share surfing with him. If he has that natural desire to, to want to do it and surf, yeah, I'd be all smiles about that. You don't have to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got some fun. You saw the pictures. Yeah. T-Dub is awesome. We call him the Godfather. Well, I call him the Godfather. Be right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me my wings out here on the lakes, you know. It was April 2006. He had started connecting with guys online that surfed out here, and one of them was Tom. So he found our website and just emailed us, anyone have a surfboard I can use? And I was like, yeah, I got a surfboard to use. So tell me when you're going to be here, and I'll, I'll meet you down there. It was snowing. It was like 32 degrees. It was cold. I actually got out of the car with my wetsuit on, already suited up, and T-Dub's all, here's your board, you know? And so we surfed for like two hours, and it was actually a pretty heavy day. He's like, yeah, it is waves, you know, and he's like, this guy can surf pretty good. I kind of just jumped in, you know, I jumped into the whole scene, just not even realizing, like, what I'm getting myself into, <laughs> but he just brought me in and he showed me the way. And he didn't have to do that, you know. I'm really proud to be really good friends with T-Dub, you know, the godfather. <laughs> I got ropes in there. Okay. You want to just put a ropes on top just to secure, you know, okay. in there. Okay, yeah, cool. We do these trips all the time, so we kind of know what to bring and, you know, kind of, we don't want to overpack, but it's good to bring extra towels and extra clothes, too, sometimes. It's yeah. got to have sandwiches and plenty of water. <laughs> yeah. It's, the cold really takes a lot of energy out of you, especially when you're surfing like three, four hours, you know, and then it's a long day. It's three hours up, three hours back. Wish I was going. Yeah. I hate when work gets in the way of surfing. Oh, damn it, T-Dub, I wish you were coming. <laughs> You'd love this place. I try to surf as much as I can whenever there's waves, but I look at it, you know, maturity or whatever it is, just say, oh, there'll be waves another day. I gotta take care of business and then I'll go surfing when I get the chance. There wasn't that much drive out here before I came out, you know? They weren't going on surf trips and pushing it to the limit and doing what I've done. Bert kind of brings the level. He really knows how to make it seem like a big event. You got the Mr. Peter just in case? Yeah, just in case. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You know, I feel like I've come out here and I've lit that under a lot of these people. I've lit that fire. I mean, a lot of guys love that. You know, there's a few haters, whatever, you know, but uh, a lot of these guys want to follow us and do this, man. All right, let's do this. All right, check the waves, huh? Yeah, I think we should paddle out here. We gotta get just get wet and get a few waves. Stoked. It's the last frontier in the surfing world out here. 
We wear a lot of rubber, huh? <laughs> Out here on the lakes. Dude, Aaron Rodgers, man. We're up in his territory. We're surfing up here. We're not playing football. Yep, this is what we do for fun, man. Go play in the cold water. Standing up on that wave, releasing to your board. We work so hard to get to that point. Out of all those hours you go, just that couple minutes on your surfboard, it's just unreal, you know? It's amazing how some of these guys find their way up here and they realize that they're surfing on the lake and, you know, and they don't want to leave. It's a never-ending freshwater dream out here on the lakes. The energy with surfing is something different, you know? You know, I'm just doing what I love and surfing, surf that next wave, I look forward to that next wave and I'm living my passion and this is what I love. 24-something years of surfing, I can tell you right now, I would never change a thing, you know? I'd never change a thing. What I like about lake surfing, uh, I live here. I like living here. I like living here in, in Wisconsin. I don't think I'll ever stop being a surfer. Now, I get up a little bit slower than I used to, you know? When I push up to get on a wave, I can, I can tell I'm not light on my feet as I used to be. But as long as I can still paddle into waves and, and catch them, I'm going to do it as long as I can. Blake thinks about surfing nonstop, and I don't think that it's going to go away. I'm not a very good skateboarder, but I'm always trying to be like surfing on a skateboard. I'm never like trying to do like skateboarding tricks. I'm just surfing. Yeah. Could you see yourself living in Wisconsin always? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I could, but it'd be a lot better to live somewhere where there's a lot more consistent like good surf. Not really sure like what I'll be doing like job wise, but I'll definitely be. California, maybe some, some strange coast that I've never really heard of, I don't know. Definitely surfing though. Ah, the haters, you know what? It's mostly the old, it's mostly the old timers. They don't want their little secret revealed. But guess what? These Great Lakes are not a secret. These lakes have been produced by huge glaciers that, and these lakes have been around for thousands and thousands of years. There has been ways before the haters, you know? So I don't really care about haters or nothing. I just do what I'm doing. And if you don't like Burton, <laughs> I don't care.